Hello guys, welcome back to Constrom GIS. So today we are going to look at uh, object-based image classification. So in the last video we talked about how we are installing the Orfeo toolbox, the OTB. And now in this video we are going to use the uh, OTB plugin to do object-based image classification. So on my screen you can see a few steps. We'll do, we'll create training classes. These are the five classes we want us to focus and these are the color color codes we are going to assign them when we are visualizing so we we'll create, create class ids we will assign what are the, the class id one uh, onwards until roads then we will do image segmentation using the otb plugin we we'll do the zonal statistics using the otb plugin we'll do a join by location this is we are doing now we are joining the zonal statistics with the training classes and then we'll train a vector classifier and then we'll classify and then visualize so that said, let's hop into QGIS and get it done. So you can see I've already loaded my image. Uh, and on this image, you can see a couple of classes. You can see this is a lake. This is an ocean in Indian Ocean. You can see some bare ground, some buildings, the green, the vegetation. I can see some roads. So that said, we are going to create a, a training shapefile and then we'll use it later. So to Create the training classes. We will create a new shape file. We will proceed to layer, create layer, new shape file, and we are going to name it. Um, let's say let's save here, and we're going to name it as train. So save this. We will the geometry will be point. Uh, we'll create a, a new column called class ID. This is of type integer. And then we are going to add this then press ok so we have a new shape file here so I want us to visualize this first so we'll uh, change the marker simple maybe do something like a star increase the size um, okay that looks better so that's it we will create the first uh, training class that is water and we will assign it class ID we'll do the same for the other um classes so uh, we will right click on this new shape file and i will toggle edit so once that is uh, in edit mode i will come here and add this you can see the add point feature and you can you should uh, see this cursor and i'm going to start with the water so this is basically what i will be doing for the other four classes and uh, so you just click on it and the class id you assign one and uh, it's always advisable you do a number of points. It's always good because uh, the things like buildings, they often come with different um, uh, roof types and those need to be taken into consideration during uh, classification. So I'll do this for the rest of the classes and once I'm done, I'll be back and we'll start uh, with the image segmentation. So I have done, I've created a couple of uh, training classes and uh, you can see in my attribute table, I have like 265 uh, classes. So that's uh, sufficient for me to, to classify this uh, image. It's a small area. So the first thing you're going to do, we will uh, open the uh, toolbox. And once I have the toolbox, I will search uh, segmentation. So, sorry, segmentation. So, so, so you, you can see I have it here and it's within the OTB plugin. This is the uh, icon for the OTB, and this is what I'm interested in. So double click on it, and the input image in this case is the image that we're using. The algorithm, we'll leave it at min shift, and uh, the other uh, options, we'll, uh, we can just leave them as uh, default. We'll check the eight neighbor connectivity, and then proceeding down, we can save this. Uh, let's save this as, uh, let's name it segments, because here we are segmenting the image. Uh, so it's 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 uh, I'd like uh, we always add the .shp for this case because if you do not it's going to return this error so if I don't add .shp it will say it's uh, not valid so that's why uh, I recommend you add .shp for shape file then save this then I uh, will run this it will take a couple of minutes depending with the size of your area of interest uh, so for larger areas expect it to take. Uh, longer periods and it also takes into consideration the processing capabilities of your machine 
So this this mine uh, is a small area and it should be done in a while. So let's give it a second. Segmentation is done. So I'll just close this and I will uh, go to my folder and I will look for the shape file and I'm just going to drag and drop it. So you can see this is the output and you can see it. let's let's visualize this. Uh, I'm just going to go to properties and uh, under symbology I'll do no brush. Uh, so you can see that each feature within uh, on the image, let me switch off the train, has been segmented. Uh, it's sort of a standalone feature based on the color uh, pixel, the pixel value. So that said, we'll do the zonal statistics. So you can just, <coughs> sorry, you can just utilize the search and do zonal statistics. And we'll use the zonal statistics within the OTB. So double click on it. And the input image is our image. The input vector data is our segment uh, shape file that we just uh, uh, finished a uh, previous uh, step. And that said, you can just save this to your file. And I'm going to name these as stats. Save this. I'm just going to run this. So this is going to calculate some zonal statistics. So as this runs, I'd like us to view the attribute table of the segments. And you can see we have a, a just one column that is DN, and it has a, around 18,000 features. So what the zonal statistics is going to do, it's going to add uh, um, some extra statistics to these uh, uh, segments. So it's done. And you can see if I open the attribute table, you can see a couple of classes. I can see the count, mean zero, student division zero, on, uh, on God, ongoing at, up to the max three. So these are some of the statistics that have been calculated on the image. And these are the statistics that we'll use in the next step. The next step was uh, join by location. So I'm just going to search join. And uh, I can say join attributes uh, by location, these. So double click on it. So join to features in the stats, yes, in the zone of statistics, the file we just, uh, the shape file that we just created. I uh, will use the intersect uh, option. I uh, will compare it now to the training data set, the ones that we just created for water, buildings, vegetation, background, and uh, roads. The join type will be one-to-one. -one. We will discard uh, the records that are not joined, and then we are going to save uh, these to our file. So I'll name this join, and it's a shape file. Just click save, and we'll just run this. So it's going to join the segments, uh, the zonal statistics, and the training uh, classes, and we should have a new uh, attribute table. So if you open the attribute table for the join, you can see most of the columns are the same, just like uh, the zonal statistics, but we have a new column at the end of, of this table called class ID and the ID. These are the two columns that are present in the training uh, in this training shape file that we created when you are creating the training classes. So we have done the join by location. Now the, what, what you have to do is you have to train a classifier and we have to create a model that can be used to classify later. So to do, to do that, we're just going to search a train classifier, a train vector classifier. You can see it in OTB. Everything you're trying to utilize, you utilize is in the OTB except for the join by location. So double click on this and uh, the input data will be the training, uh, the, the join that we just generated. And then we're going to go to the fields that we need for training, uh, for the training. So these are the fields. Uh, if we open the attribute table for the join, the fields that you're interested in are the mean zero, standard deviation zero, mean one, the standard deviation one, mean two, standard deviation two, mean three, standard deviation three. And uh, if you have more to four, maybe mean four up to uh, the number, it depends on the number of uh, standard deviations and the means you have. Those are the fields that you are interested in. So I'm going to select those. I'm just going to come here. Click this, just check, check for those uh, fields. If you have more than that, that you should select. So press OK. And then uh, you don't have any validation vector data. So we'll just let it uh, be like that. 
So we need to select a field that contains the class integer label for the supervision. So this is for the class ID and this we have it here. So this is going to use the classes that we just assigned to create a model that is going to, to classify this. So you can see some of the information about the classifier and the model that we're going to create. The classifier to use for training, it's going to use a lib as a the SVM. There are other options you can see. And some, these are some of the parameters that are, these are uh, you're going to train the model with. So that said, I can just save the model, save the file, and I'm just going to name this as model dot model. So remember to add dot model because this is not a shape file. This is a model you're going to save. And we are going to use it to do classification. So that said, uh, press OK and then click click run. So it's done uh, creating the model. And then now the last step is uh, the vector uh, classification. Now we are going to search a vector um, classifier. Let me search classifier. And this is within the OTB. So everything we have utilized is within the OTB. Double click on it. And the input vector data in this case will be the stats, the zonal statistics that we had generated earlier. So that said, we will have to input the model file. This is the file that we have just generated in the train vector classifier step. So we will browse to it. I named it as model.model. .model. So the output field, this can be optional. So we are going to again input the names of the fields that have to be calculated. And these are the fields that we had just selected, the mean 0, standard deviation 0, mean 1, standard deviation 1, mean 2, standard deviation 2, mean 3, standard deviation 3. So click OK. And then I'm just going to save these as our classes. So this, OK, it's saying it's not valid. So it means I can add .shp. And then I'm just going to click Save. So press run, and once it's run, it's going to generate the five classes that we just need. So I can just switch off uh, these, and I mean with the image, I will go to my folder and drag and drop uh, the, the newly classified image. So these are the classes that has been generated. You can see it has taken some uh, values that are with, with uh, outside the extent of our area of interest. So before I do the actual visualization, I'd like to clip. So this is a vector data. I will use the geo, the vector geoprocessing tools, clip. The input layer is the classes. The output will be the area of interest. And I like to save this to a temporary file. I'll run that. And uh, once it's done, I can now remove the... Now you can see I have the zoom to layer. And these are the classes. So you can see if I open the attribute table, there has to be a new column called predicted. And now this predicts each segment for the 18,000 features that we had seen earlier after we did segmentation. So each segment was classified and assigned a class value. So we're going to visualize this. So I was going to right click on this and um, properties under symbology. I will uh, come to here. I'm going to select categorized. I'm going to use the value predicted and I'm going to press classify. So I don't need these because I don't have any of these. I will need now these. Remember one was water. So I'm just going to name this uh, water and I'm going to assign it uh, a blue color. So I will select something uh, blue like that. Okay. So uh, the next one was buildings. So I'm just going to name it uh, buildings. And uh, this, this can be brown, uh, I mean red. So just going to come here, maybe that red. And then the third, the third one was uh, vegetation. And then I can assign this, we can assign this something like green, you know, to just some light shades of green, okay. And then the, the fourth one was the uh, background. So these are areas that have no vegetation and we can assign them the color brown. So if I create these, 
let's do something like that okay that's brown and then finally the last the last one was rods and i can do we can do gray for rods so if we do something like uh, gray that will be better and uh, that way you can just place a pry and then okay so you can see now you've visualized and classified our image so if i were to come to this sort of this place so five is a background and i have some vegetation some buildings so if i turn off this i can see this is a background these are vegetation around there and the buildings around there and you can see yeah, for water it was classified quite well so most of these areas have been even the roads so you can see the uh, few challenges are the pixel compositions where you uh, find that buildings can share maybe the pixel values of vegetation maybe a roof uh, as a, a building has a green roof and that can conflict with uh, you see scenarios like this these are green building a uh, green roof but it has been assigned as a as some uh, partly some background vegetation so these are the, some of the conflicts but you can always edit these out and have a clean uh, classified image but generally object based classification performs way better in my opinion than supervised or unsupervised and it's very very useful for small areas uh, where you if you do an uh, area like this if you did supervised classification most of it is going to come buildings you will be unable even to get uh, these roads so that is it guys give it a try and let me know how this goes thank you guys please like this video subscribe to our channel and see you later guys